October tries. Toby is doing exceptionally well in the pro category um, of the GTA Academy. He is, what did you win? Your first three races you won? Yeah. And then two races? Yeah. And then Angus got the last one. You unfortunately had that incident with Gilbert, didn't unfortunately, you? Unfortunately, yeah. But, you know, to take five out, take five out of six five with out of six. two so, double poles they, isn't a bad start of the way of the season. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, double yeah, poles, yeah. So, so, yeah. Yeah, no. Um, Toby's doing exceptionally well. So I thought for everybody watching, it would be great to just get a, a quick chat with the mindset of the person <laughs> yeah. who's leading the championship at the moment. So, um, first of all, how has Snet been today? Snet today has been actually quite bad for me, to be fair. Um, yeah, I think so. Like, I'm on a... The rain hasn't helped this morning. It was um, a bit... Yeah, it was a bit stop and We're on a, on a really stringent budget and test programme. So, um, always on old tyres, hard setup, and just wasn't coming together. But the dry session then... Um, came in P2 with three tenths away from pole, yeah. and that's my first dry laps I've ever run here in this car. So I'm happy with that. That's all right. Well, that's, I mean, that's one hell of an achievement. Yeah, like it's it's nice. It's nice now. I've got the car at the point where I can just jump in, drive to a point where I can get to a, a reasonable standard. Yeah. Um, I just wish I could yeah, eat that out with a few more test days. But yeah, yeah. we're turning up on a Friday and, and having fun, and yeah, it's going okay so far. So. So. Um, Toby is in, like I say, Toby's in the pro class. Um, so I'm a rookie, Toby's a pro. And um, Toby, you've done GRDC, haven't yes, you, before? And yes, yes. Just to explain, so the GRDC, to the best of my knowledge, you'll probably know better than I do, it was the previous version of what kind of the GTA is now, but in a different car, in a smaller car, slightly less sort of, uh, let's call it horsepower and slightly less... I don't know. What's the best yeah, way to describe it? Yeah, the best way to describe it, it is um, it's a car n completely not reliant on any aero, on road oh, tyres, yeah, with it. much yeah, less power. Yeah. Um, but the grid on that was actually formed of rookies only. Yes. So the criteria to be in the GRDC was that it had to be your first ever race season. Yeah. Um, unlike this one, it's obviously mixed up with rookies and, and pro drivers, um, which creates a bit of interest. That's, that creates yeah. some interest in... So that, I mean, that's a good thing. So I, I was originally going to do the GRDC right. in 2018. So I would have been in it. 2018? That, wow. That's when I would have wow. done it. Yeah. Um, and then I didn't do it. I went on to do other things. Obviously, I'm back now to do the, um, the GT Academy. So yeah. From your point of view, your racing as a previously experienced racer, but you're with rookies on the grid. Yeah. So yeah. from your point of view, when you're sat there on the grid and you're about to get going, I know what I'm thinking. From the mind of somebody who's not a rookie, what is it that's going through your mind at that well, point of view? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, if the, the focus really is kind of pole, take the lead, disappear. That's the goal for everyone, right? Pole, that's, take the lead, disappear. That's, that's, that's the goal. That's, that's, that's the goal, right? Yeah, that's, yeah. that's the three things you've got to try and tick off. But um, I, think, I think what's interesting kind of having a mixture... Um, this season actually having rookies and experienced drivers is that the kind of unpredictability that can come from rookies yeah. because you guys understand they're learning a race craft in a, in a very high power car on road tyres with it's very unforgiving it's a very difficult car to drive yeah. well on the limit so I think from, um, from an experienced racing point of view there's that kind of worry of like actually what's a rookie going to do if you get alongside them if you get a bit of door to door how, how much can you trust and lean on them yeah. um, and that, that's something that um, that I guess you learn in any championship you do, you yeah. learn what drivers you can lean on and what you, who you can work with. But obviously rookies, you guys are new, so you've got a lot to learn and it's a massive yeah. learning curve and That's that makes so it hard. That's so interesting you say that because as a rookie, when I'm on the grid, the, what I'm thinking is, holy crap, that's someone who's more experienced than me. All I want to do is get through this corner without bashing into them yeah because the last thing i would do, i would feel terrible if i took someone out just because i made a rookie mistake yeah and i accidentally took that person out or something terrible like that i'd feel really terrible about that yeah um, but to the same extent it's sort of the weirdest weirdest thing because i also still want to beat you I of course. Will, I, I'm, I'm sat there of going, course, yeah. I want to beat that guy that person's a pro he's done more than me so if i do better than him then you're I'm going better. okay yeah, you know I mean? and you're going okay. Yeah, and and that's the thing. Like, I think um, I think when it comes down to kind of racing rookies and, and pro drivers, is that we've got um, just for clarity of the, the video, we've got um, a completely different point structure. So, and whether yeah. whether I get beaten by a rookie or I beat a rookie, 
whichever way round it is, there's no no actual advantage in points, is there? No, so, so there's, there's no benefit really. If there's a rookie and a pro right next to each other on track, there isn't really any benefit in either of them battling absolutely. and risking damage because yeah. we can't get points against each other. If that makes sense. Yeah, that's it. I mean, look at I look at um, race three at Donington after getting spin, spun out, and um, I quickly caught. Um, P4 and P3 in my class end up into P2. And then I sat behind three rookies. I think it, I can't remember who it was at the top of my head, but caught them up. And then my next pro was a long way down the road with six minutes left to go in the race. And you, I made that decision of, I'll just sit here. I don't need to go past these three guys because I could risk a DNF that would cause me to lose the championship. So. Um, it does add a, di a different a different thing completely for us because we have to calculate that I idea think of risk. That is what's so interesting. That's one thing I didn't think about when I started this. I genuinely thought that every lap, every race, or even every practice session in qualifying, I am just going to be hell for leather, go for it, with no thought of anything else. Yeah. And I remember we've spoke so much over Instagram and text messages yeah, yeah, yeah. previously, yeah. and chatted, and you've you've been encouraging me to say think, think have before, think. because if you. If you know, there is no point in risking a DNF if the championship is what you're going for. If the championship is that, is that you know, target, there's no point in risking a do not finish. I mean, people, yeah. there are some very fast rookies, and yeah, there are some fast rookies who have previously literally just gone off the track because they're going too hard and they're going for the next thing and they're fighting to get through the, the uh, crowd. I mean, I think there was, there was Ravi, wasn't there, on race one at Brands Hatch. He spun on the first corner, which was very unfortunate. Yeah. And then he was trying to fight his way back through, and he was battling through pros, and he ended up, again, unfortunately spinning off because right. he was trying to get through. Yeah. Um, and it's sort of like, if you actually stop and think, he would have not got a DNF, and he would have still ended up P3 Banks in some class. good, yeah, yeah. But he didn't need to battle for all those people. But, yeah. I mean, there's, there's, a certain ment there's a certain mentality. I mean, I might be speaking for you here, but as a racing driver, there's always that mentality of not aggression, but competitiveness. Yeah, yeah 100%. Yeah, otherwise, we, we wouldn't, wouldn't be a racer otherwise. We're here yeah. to compete and try and be the best racer, right? That's, yeah. that's what the goal is, isn't it? But yeah. there comes that point, you know, I, I always compare people like, you know, Colin Turkis as a prime example. You look at his strategy over uh, his success that he's had over the previous seasons. And yes, of course, he's been a race winner and he's, he's been on the podium quite a lot, but actually when you look at how many races he wins, when he wins a championship, it's very few wins. Yeah. It shows you can win a championship not winning a race or winning a few races. Yeah. It's about what you do upstairs that, that counts. And, and that's and, what you've been saying to me. Yeah, that's, that's it. I mean, you look at, you look at um, you know, that kind of podium area, and once you drop out of the top three, there's only really like a point between yeah. per place. And you might know that you're quicker than that driver in front, but if you're going to risk your car and potentially a DNF for one point, yeah. is it worth it? So what my mentality is that when I race, and something that, that I, you know, that I have done already this season, is I'll happily sit behind someone, just keep putting pressure on. I haven't got to make some desperate move for one yeah. point. I've just put pressure on, and eventually that pressure will allow them to buckle, and then I'll have a gap to, yeah. to come through. And, and I think that's when. You know, I've done a lot of karting, and that's where I've learned my, my yeah. craft in, in racing. And, and you know, I'm still quite inexperienced in cars. Um, but you've got a, it's almost like playing chess at 100 mile an hour. You're looking at that is, every little move, every yeah. little thing. Um, I'm trying to think what person's going to do. Like at the end of this straight, where are they going to break? I'm, yeah. I'm right on their arse and I'm gaining, I'm gaining, I'm gaining, I'm gaining. Is it worth it? Should I just actually back off before we get to this breaking zone? Otherwise, we're just going to smash yeah, yeah. into each other. Yeah, absolutely. Through. Yeah. But how is it for you? Because like um, we've got obviously, you know, the rookies are predominantly have done lots of supercar days, track days. They've done they've yes. done stuff on track. Yeah. Um, and doing laps around in a G56, you can be very quick and near to that pole time or, or pro time. Yeah. But what's it like for you racing? Because that's what, that's what I'm quite curious about. Okay, so first race, I've never been more terrified <laughs> in my whole life. I Wait, actually, you know, it, it was, yeah, I mean, the, the only thing I compare it to is when I was six or seven years old and I knew I was skiing with the family on holiday and I nearly went over a precipice and yeah, yeah. died. And that was the terror that you get the first time you're on the grid. It's an like experience. Your, your heart, you're on the grid and your heart's going 120 beats per minute. Yeah. So, but in the race, that stops. The moment that you're into second gear off the line, it goes, yeah. It becomes animalistic, it becomes instinct. It's yeah. just, you, you're just going. Yeah. And I don't see the difference then. Unfortunately, this is probably what you're talking about, where you think what you're doing, whereas I'm not. It's just instincts. A car in front of me, am I faster? Yes, try and get past. Yeah. I don't consider if it's a rookie, I don't consider my points, I don't consider. Because that, that's an extra level of complication that my mind 
hasn't been trained for. Yeah, yet. but that but that will come with experience. It will I naturally agree. come. It naturally comes with experience. And, and I mean, I remember my first race in GRDC. I was here actually, um, and I got it a bit wrong going into turn two. So did three other cars, and we all ended up spinning off. And it was it was annoying. And I was right at the back. The safety car was rapid, isn't it? You know, we couldn't catch the safety car, and that was my <laughs> that was my weekend done. Honestly, the safety yeah. car was on it. Yeah. Um, and I suppose I suppose I've kind of like once that had happened and I'd got over that overwhelmingness of kind of racing for the first time in a car, I was then back to go-karting in my head. Right, okay, how do I pick off places? How can I be consistent? Yeah. Um, and yeah, of course, if there's a move open for me, I'm going in. You know, if there's a gap, I'm going in. I'm, you know, I'm never going to shy away from that. But there's times where showing your nose is all you need to do sometimes. Yeah. Just get in the mirrors and you'll see a, a gap yeah, up here. Um, and it's quite surprising how often drivers drive in the mirrors. Um, and, and how, so this is the thing, so, you have been predominantly right at the front of the grid on most of the race stars. You've been you've been racing through at the front, either leading the race all the way through to a win, or actually just behind and then getting a win at the end and these sorts of things. I have been completely the opposite. Yeah. I have started most of my races. I think three out of the six races, I've been on the back of the grid. Right. And I fought my way back through to seventh and eighth. And that's from the back. great experience to have. And that, yeah. that to me, yeah. I'm, I'm quite conscious that few of the rookies who are setting fantastic qualifying times are not getting that experience. Yeah, it will help you now I think for helps. the future of, yeah. of your race career. And, and wherever you decide to take your race career, it really will help you. Because you look at the British GT, you know, if you go into a GT3 class, you've got to be able to manage your traffic. Yeah. GT4, you've got to be able to manage what's coming through. Yeah. Um, so they're all good experiences. Yeah. Um, and if you can get your qualifying nailed, and you can get in that, that just top end of it and not have to worry about something from the back, you'll find naturally you'll just have that confidence then to, to put moves in and show yourself as a, as a competitor that's ready I, to go I, forever. I really hope so. And I, I was so disappointed in myself at Dumpton. Right. Because in the practice, I don't know if you remember the TSL, but in practice, there was like you, Angus, and yeah. Darren. Yeah, and yeah. So practicing. He was there. P4. He was there. P4. Yeah, he was doing really well, yeah. And then, um, and then it, when it actually came to qualifying, I, my head was all over the place. I, yeah. I, I was, I was stressing. I was putting pressure on myself. Yeah. And I ended up P12. But it is a pressured environment, isn't it? Yeah. And I think that's the difference when it comes to like, and this is obviously what you learn as a rookie, is that that kind of pressured environment going from running, bang, banging laps out for days yeah. in testing, nothing really prepares you for actual no. qualifying and actually racing. Yeah. Um, you just have to get on and do that, and it yeah. is a completely different headspace because you, you put that additional pressure on going, oh, I can put that lap in. Mm. I'll just put it put it in, and I need to I need to put it in, and then all of a sudden you're finding that on track you're getting frustrated, and then you're oh that lap's not there, another one it's not there, and you know you can do it, yeah. and you've got to sort of almost drop yourself back into that comfort zone of it's just another test day, yeah. just another session. I remember you saying that. Yeah, too, um, but it isn't easy. Yeah. It isn't easy. And it's there. There are some sort of strategies that you've had that you've mentioned to me. Yeah. About yeah, yeah. you know when we sit in the holding area or, or, or you know part for my after the race. It's not as bad there, but yeah. before the race, when we're in the holding area, you sort of tend to stay in your car, just chill out, and yeah. just sit there. And yeah. a lot of us other drivers, we, we get up, we walk around, we chat to each other. Yeah. You stay there, helmet on, visor down, and stay focused on the racing. It's warm. Yeah, it's it warm out there. It does get yeah, it does get hot. But I've worked on fitness and stuff outside to try and cope with yeah. with the heat. Um, but I'm one of these drivers that once I'm buckled up, my helmet's on, I'm in the car. I'm in the car. I'm not going to break that cycle. Um, I have a routine that I do every single time I get in the car. Wow. Um, and I don't break that. So I know that that's my rhythm. I'm in a rhythm then. So when I, when I leave to go on circuit, um, in theory, I should be back in my groove and yeah, doing my yeah, own yeah. thing. Um, and even to the point of like who comes to my car. You know, I won't, I won't sit and talk to anyone. I'll just be silent sometimes. Yeah. The nerves are still there. They're just like, you know, they're, they're still there. But it's just the way I kind of deal with it. Um, well, I mean, the, the nerves mean that you care. Yeah, yeah, I'm saying, oh, you're passionate about it. Yeah, yeah. Because if you didn't yeah. care and you weren't bothered, then it, there'd be no nerves. You'd just be like, oh, it doesn't matter to me. But yeah. it does It does mean that you know, you're know you passionate about what you're doing and you want to do well. I mean, I, 100%. I think that's the one thing that I get when I'm lined up on the grid or, like, say, in the holding area. I'm like, I know I'm quicker than being back here in P16, P17. I yeah. to get through these Yeah, lines. I know where I, know I should I be. Can do it. Yeah. Um, and then it's just that sort of frustration sometimes, especially if there's, if there's any contact yeah because if there's contact that is it's not a contact sport. yeah and you have to be bumping into each other 100%, yeah. i've been i've been guilty of it i mean I, 
poor uh, Tom Hartley I, on the, I think it was race two at, uh, at Donington. Yeah. I didn't even know he was there. And I, I sort of came across because there was a gap opening up. And I bumped him. I, was, I thought I hit a stone or I, I thought I hit it's a rough quite bit It's quite surprising, track. isn't it? I didn't it? know there was even a car there. Yeah. And then um, he was saying, no, Ed, get out of the way. You're going to push me on the grass. I was like, oh, bloody hell. And then he bumped me back. And then it was like we were going down the straight. It happens was, fast as well, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. And it, was, it was sort of like... Wow, you know, like that moment, you've got to be so aware of your surroundings. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that, that sort of start on the grid is always that scary bit. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, once you've gone through a lap or two, you, it settles down. Then it, it does. Everyone's trying to find their place. But, but uh, you know, I've 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 had terrible starts this season. Brands at three terrible starts. Well, you were um, on the, you were, your nose was up. Wasn't yeah, it? it's so uphill, really hard. Uphill and everyone else was down. And these cars just will spin so easy, don't they? Because yeah, they mentioned yeah. tyres. But um, yeah. you know, so I've I've had to try and manage my way through and there's 20 minutes there's plenty of time to get it done and obviously when you know granted when you when you qualify and you have a few mistakes and perhaps you drop down a bit you might know that you're a bit more desperate for time because obviously yeah. it's finite um, but patience has, does come into it um, and, and obviously if you depend on what you want to do with your race career if you want to stay as a sprint racer or an endurance I, I love endurance that's where I want to be yeah bro. so I'm happy to be patient consistent and just buy my time um, and it's paid off so far this season yeah so far, so good. Mate, um, it's a long way to go yet. Long way to go yet. But um, but I tell you what, another thing is is you know, and as you might find this later on, is when you start encouraging sponsors to the package, that adds an entirely different Love perspective. Oh, it's insane. Some days it's insane because everyone around me right now is saying, "Well, it's the championship's yours. You're going to win another race." But I take every race as they come. Um, that's, the right, that's the right attitude because it, it is a lot on your shoulders. When, yeah. When you're at the top, yeah. You've got your sponsors who are saying. Come on, we want to keep seeing you at the top. Yeah. You've got the extra pressure of not only I want to do well, yeah. you've got, oh my God, I've got everybody leaning on me like they expect. Yeah, yeah. It's I, a, I don't want to make it even worse. Sorry, yeah. I said that. Yeah, but, but it, it, is, it is exactly how it is. It's yeah. exactly how it is. And, and, but that's what I kind of relish in. I, re, I relish in pressure and I love that. Good. Um, yeah. It's fun. Um, but yeah, it's, it adds a completely different dynamic. And obviously, I've had, you know, coming from corporate karting to, to, to racing cars, I've always had sponsors. So it's kind of, that adaption's kind of come quite early. But, yeah. Um, it's definitely something to think about for as you grow as a driver, kind of what is expected of you as a driver. It's, um, it adds a completely different element of, of the sport. Well, I mean, I, the only pressure, fortunately for me, the only pressure I've got on myself right now is I don't want to let my coaches down because they work so hard to yeah, make yeah, me yeah. the best driver I can be. Yeah. And I don't want to let them down. I want to make sure that I'm, doing, I'm, I'm pushing it to the absolute yeah, yeah. wherever I go. And also, you know, I'm, I've invested a lot to do this, you know, yeah. uh, time, okay, money, fair enough, but time, emotion, I don't want to throw it away, it's a no. silly mistake, I want to make sure that I'm doing the absolute best that I can, Yeah. so that I come away from it going, yeah, I'm pleased with that. I'm really happy with that, and yeah. I, I, I mean, I'm sure, to be fair, if anybody's watching this, you might have seen the video from Donington, have a look if you haven't, but you can see how keyed off I was <laughs> after my qualifying session at Donington. I was just like, I don't want to talk to I anyone. I remember seeing you, yeah. I don't want to talk to anyone. I'm so angry sort of thing. Um, and obviously that is the pressure that we put on ourselves, you know. Yeah, it's all on yourself. But look what you did afterwards, and you have to celebrate the wins. Yeah. Like I look at it this morning. I've, I've messed up completely this morning. 10 seconds off the base. Horrendous morning. Yeah. Right off, it's done. I can't, can't change that. Exactly. So next session, I'm going to go as fast as I can. On it. Get on it, yeah. um, and here I am with you know in P2, P1 in glass with P2 overall, um, and it, it is an art. It is a real art. Racing is a real art. But I think what's an art? Yeah, but what Jeanette has done, I think, with the GT Academy is a really good like platform so. for a foundation to learn. And it, and I think as long as you treat this championship as a rookie, as a learning platform, yeah. of course, if you can pick the title up, amazing. That would be brilliant in your first year. But I think um, you know I, I came into season to learn. Um, because I knew that I had a limited amount of time in the car and there's a limited amount of money to allow me to go racing. So I have to make every time I go out in the car count and I've got to learn each time. Um, and I'd only done eight races prior to this whole event. Yeah, I remember you saying, yeah. Um, so I'm not really that experienced. But I think if you if you constantly analyse yourself to learn, naturally things come your way, you'll get results. Um, and you've come a long way, mate. Honestly, it's epic to see. Honestly, epic to see. Like, from... from Seeing at your first test session, um, I remember seeing you in the wall on, the, on one the of the first tests. Yeah, I remember yeah, seeing that. Yeah, and bloody barriers. Yeah, yeah. Some there must there. be somewhere. Yeah, but <laughs> you've come on such a long way, and like you're, you can see your consistency is coming. Good. You can see that's happening, and that's really where you'll start picking up prizes. Then is that 
consistent because yeah. you, you've been there, you're, yeah, you're there. I've got my podium yeah. to Brands Hatch and things, and I've been in P4, P5, and a few races in my class. Yeah. So that's that's been great. And uh, like I say, I mean, I got up to, I think it was P7 and P8 overall at Donington in one of the races from the back. Yeah, which is so a good achievement. It, which was, yeah. it was really great. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, it's, I mean, I feel good. I feel someone like yourself appreciates it. That makes me feel good. So good, mate. Yeah, no, good. But um, yeah, I'm excited to get out. What time is the next session? Uh, it's racing. Thank you.